It's you, it's you, it's you, you're the king of my heart. It's you, it's you, it's you, you're the king of my heart. It's you, it's you, it's you, you're the king of my heart. It's you, it's you, it's you, you're the king of my heart. We say, it's you, Jesus. Jesus, it's you, you're the king of my heart. It's you, Lord. It's you, only you. It's you, you're the king of my heart. Say, it's you. It's you. It's you. You can have it all, God. It's you. It's you. It's yours. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Full Council Pine Bluff. This is our Elevate service, uh, also like our Bible study here on midweek Wednesdays. And we are just so grateful to have all of you tuning in on Facebook, on YouTube, everyone that's with us here in the sanctuary. Good evening to all of you. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm telling you, you are in the right place. All right? So what we, want you want, what we want you to do is go ahead and hit the share tab, share tonight's broadcast with all of your followers, all of your friends. Let everybody know that this is the place to be, and they need to come and hear a word from the Lord this evening. Amen? All right. And while you're doing that, I'm going to jump into a couple of announcements. So set your alarms to wake up and start your day on the prayer cloud every weekday morning at 6 a.m. for a time of prayer and a powerful word from the Lord. Just dial 716 427-1395. Then use the access code 739-842-POUND. Be sure to start your day the right way on the prayer cloud. Would you like to schedule a meeting with Pastor V? If so, please call the following, the, the following number and schedule your meeting. Dial 501-812-7104. If you would like to be baptized or have your child baptized or even your baby dedicated to the Lord, we ask that you sign up today or after any of our services in the foyer at the information booth. If you are a new member and you haven't completed orientation, you are encouraged to do so. You can do this by going to our Facebook page, which is Full Council Church, Pine Bluff. Scroll over to the About tab. Go down to where it says New Member Orientation. And then after you watch six quick and easy videos, you will have completed orientation. Make sure that you put your name and the date that you completed each video. And then you're going to receive your new member certificate during our new members recognition ceremony. So go ahead and do that so you can get fully acclimated to our church and get to work. Amen. And if you have completed orientation but you didn't receive your, um, your certificate, you can stop by the church office and pick that up today after service or any of our services. Also, if you have joined Full Council Pine Bluff but you haven't received an envelope number, you can call the following number and ask to speak to someone in member services to receive your envelope number. That number is 501-791-0600. All right, mighty men. The mighty men are taking a trip all the way to Dallas, Texas. They're going to be enjoying the Rangers versus Giants game. The registration is only $75. This is the FC Mighty Men's, mighty men's Advance. This is taking place June 6th to the 8th in Arlington, Texas. So all the mighty men, whoever, wherever you are, go ahead and get signed up, get registered today. Don't wait. Don't delay. That sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. 
All right. Now, finally, we are sowers who are always ready to sow. And don't forget, we're going to keep on sowing until the hundredfold is flowing. Your continued giving is super, super important, and you can give in the sanctuary today, or you can use PayPal, Giveify, or the Shelby Next app by clicking the link at the bottom of the screen that says Remote Giving Methods, or find quick links to all of our giving platforms by visiting www.fullcouncil.org and click the offering tab. Also, feel free to mail in or drop off your offerings to the church during normal business hours. And finally, let's get connected. Connect with us on Instagram by following Pastor V at V the Saint on Facebook. Search Silas Vincent Johnson. Follow our church on Instagram at Full Council PB on Facebook by searching Full Council Church Pine Bluff. Look us up on YouTube by searching Full Council Pine Bluff. Click the small bell to receive notifications and to keep up with all of our new posts and services. Well, that is all the announcements for this evening. But remember, to, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or you're right here with us in the service, in the sanctuary, tell everybody that you see, everybody that you know, that Full Council Pine Bluff is the place to be. Now, have you had a chance to share yet? If you haven't, go ahead and do so. You can do that by clicking that share tab. You also can let everybody know, call somebody, text somebody, remind them that service starts in about 30 seconds and they don't need to miss what's gonna happen here tonight. Pastor is starting a new teaching called The Power of Yokes. Amen. So I'm excited to hear what that's all about. I'm sure that you are. If you're excited, go ahead and put some hearts on the screen. Get excited because the Lord is going to speak today through the man of God, and we all can use a word from the Lord. All right? Uh, special thanks to all the volunteers that helped to make our Easter celebration uh, a great success. Blessings to you. All right. Now, it's time to jump into our praise and worship service here. So go ahead and stand to your feet if you're able, and let's give God the glory because he is magnificent. He is awesome. Welcome the full council pine bluff well praise the lord how are y'all doing tonight y'all all right anybody ready to worship <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah come on can we just lift up a shout of praise shout hallelujah hallelujah any free folk in the building shout hallelujah glory 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 hallelujah hallelujah we're just going to declare that we are free tonight we are free. The Bible said that who the Son says free is free indeed. Hallelujah. We ready? Yeah. Come on, put your hands together. Oh. Sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I wanna jump higher than before. No more shackles, no more chains, no more. 
Thank you. We well, praise God. Can we give God a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Glory. thank you for your peace and your joy. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus over tonight's service. I rebuke every hindering spirit of sorcery. Anything that's not of you, we bring it down now in Jesus' name. I thank you for every drop of the anointing. I thank you for every soul that you've allowed us to minister to. I thank you for every penny that you placed in our pocket. Every morsel of food that you've allowed to touch our lips. We thank you for divine revelation and divine direction. We thank you for divine protection. Thanks be to God who always without fail leads us into triumph. So sweet Holy Spirit, have your way. Saturate our souls. Heal, deliver, and set free. Do what only you can do in this place. And I say all blessing and all glory, all honor, all wisdom, and all thanksgiving and power. It belongs to you, Abba, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, Lord Jesus Christ, forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give God one more good shout of praise. Come on, praise like you got some victory in here. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen, amen. Well, let's praise the Lord for our praise team. Amen. And our band, God bless you, sir. Amen. I see you, I see you. Hallelujah. How many of y'all came tonight to hear a word from the Lord? How many of you all came tonight to be elevated? How many of you don't even know why you're here? Amen. We probably got two people. Amen. But I'm very happy to be here tonight. Tonight's going to be awesome. And so I want to thank God for those who are watching online. And if you don't mind, share this with somebody. This is going to bless you. This is going to bless them. I believe that the church, of course, is in a prophetic spectrum by which we are the glorious church, the latter house. And to be honest, we have to take this thing to another level. Amen. God is great. And so if you're on YouTube tonight, share this with somebody. I believe it's going to bless them greatly. And so, if y'all don't mind, let's make a confession over this word on tonight. If you got your Bible, I want you to wave it like a fanatic. And say this with me. Say, this is my Bible. Bible. It's God's holy word. word. I am who it says I am. I can do and I will do what it says I can do. I already have what it says I have. Tonight I will be taught. The word of the living God 
faith will come because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith will come because faith comes by hearing and hearing from God. Tonight, I will hear from God and my mind will be transformed. Therefore, my life will be transformed and I will never be the same. Never, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. And ever. And ever. Uh, put that in B. B flat. I'm just playing. I don't, know. I don't even know what that is. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated on the way down. Somebody shout it so on tonight. Amen. And so if you got your Bible, I want you to turn over here to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. And tonight we're going to start, I don't know, it might be a series because we actually started this on Sunday. How many of y'all enjoyed the message Sunday? <laughs> the Holy Spirit dropped that title in my spirit, uh, Yokes. And I didn't even think about it till Monday after I was listening to the word that yokes and eggs go together. <laughs> However, that wasn't what we were talking about. I said, Lord, you got a sense of humor. I bet the folk in the media department thought I was going to talk about egg yolks on Sunday. But tonight we're going to kind of continue that. And tonight we're going to talk about the power of yolks. Amen. Amen. Man, y'all make me want to go home. Tonight we're going to talk about the power of yokes. Okay. I guess I'll stay for a little while longer. And so if you got your Bible, again, turn to Matthew chapter 11, and I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for this word on tonight. Holy Spirit, use these lips of clay. I step back that you may step forward. I covenant with you in advance to give you all the praise and all the glory for every good fruit that happens because of this word spoken on tonight. I thank you that your people have ears in order to hear. Father, you sent your word to heal us and to deliver us from all of our destruction. You sent your word to accomplish a task, and I thank you that it will not return unto you void. You sent your word to prosper the thing. And so, Father, I declare prosperity upon everyone that receives this word on tonight. I thank you, Father, that as I'm sowing on good ground tonight, we'll receive some 30, some 60, some 100 for return. Do what only you can do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And so if you got your Bible, y'all got uh, Matthew 11? Amen. What about verse 25? Amen. When you got to say, oh yeah. oh, yeah. It says, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by the Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Everybody say, thank you, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. for the rest. For the rest. Lift your hand to, to heaven one more time and say, thank you, Father. For the, rest. for the rest. Now tell yourself, I have, I have rest. rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find that rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my Burden is light. Somebody shout the power, the power of, yokes. of yokes. Now, what is a yoke? A yoke uh, is multidimensional. One aspect of a yoke is what they use for slaves. And these people that are slaves, you know, they'll have them yoked together uh, to keep them in line and keep them in order. Today, we would call that a chain gang. Then you have the aspect of a yoke uh, that has to do with working together. We talked about this on Sunday about how the oxen, you know, uh, they're yoked together and they go to work with each other. 
Got it. Well, either way, how you look at it, a yoke is what keeps you stuck to something. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I'm clingy when it comes to the Lord. Again, I don't know if I'm talking to the right crowd, but I just love his presence. The Bible said in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. The psalmist said it like this. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for thou art with me. It's something about having God with you. And I'm hoping on tonight that you will uh, develop on the inside of you uh, the same kind of inclination that I don't want to be too far away from the Lord. There's benefits to it because he says, if you take my yoke upon you, if you become clingy, if you, if, if you, if you uh, are stuck with me, then guess what? You're going to find some rest for your soul. Amen. It's time to rest. We talked about this Sunday that there's power in rest because it's when I find myself seated, hallelujah, where God is in my position. Come on, somebody. That's a place of authority. When God, or when you rest, God goes to work. Come on, somebody. But when you work, God will kind of chill out on your situation. I declare, just like I did Sunday, that we are in an extreme season of extreme moves of God. Amen. And if you're at the right place, at the right time, you're going to experience extreme shifts. Yes, sir. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? How many of y'all know life and death ain't in your palm? Yes, life and death is in your mouth. Yes, sir. Can I get an amen? amen? Say it like you mean it. Amen. But before I can go from one yoke to another... There's one yoke that has to be let go of or broken. Turn over here to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. 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 Galatians chapter 5. And let's look here in verse number 1. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of what? Bondage. So right here we're finding out that there is a yoke of bondage that we once had. Now, to be honest, some of us still look like we bound to that yoke. The Bible says over in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, that uh, the Lord is the Spirit. And what the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what, y'all? Liberty. So right here we see again that if I'm connected to God, watch this, y'all, I'm also connected to freedom. Free to be what God has called me to be. Okay, okay, y'all, 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 y'all. What y'all? I said, what y'all? All All right, all right, all right. He said, come to me, all you are heavy laden and you you labor, uh, and I'll give you rest for your soul. Now, why is he talking to folk that are tired? Because these individuals have an assignment. They have something that they were called to, but the burdens of life are not allowing them to walk in it. For instance, some of y'all can't even say amen. So it's kind of cute until we look at your results. Because... If you're with him, if you're yoked with him, you're free not only to say amen, but to say money cometh. To say be thou made whole. 
to break every spell of sorcery and witchcraft worked against you. To tell poverty to leave your house. To tell depression to leave your mind. To tell torment to leave your life. When you're yoked up with him and you're in a place of rest, you're free to exercise your authority. Do you want to glorify God or no? Well, he's not glorified with that boo-boo look. Imagine going out of your way for your spouse. You done cleaned the house. You done washed the car. You done cooked a fabulous meal. You done went to work. You done did everything you can do. And you just sitting back like, yes, Lord, here they come. And then when they come in the house, all they say, hmm. That's not giving honor to what honor is due. I dare you to get excited about God. Show them how to do it on the internet, y'all. So why does God want us to be free? You can find this over in 1 Kings, I think it's 1 Kings chapter 12. And in verse number 4, uh, some of the subjects of King Rehoboam came to him and he said, Hey, your father has put a heavy yoke on us. Turn over there, matter of fact, to 1 Kings chapter, chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if you can't serve God... If you can't praise, if you can't reflect his goodness, you're in bondage. You're not cool. You're not hip. You're not, oh, yeah, this is how I do it. No, you're in bondage. Because when he's Lord, it's not about your personality. It's not about your style. It's not about your profile. It's A-L-L about him. We love to say that to be churchy, but can we come to real life? Can we just come to real life? I need some freedom. I wasn't put on this earth to pay bills and to impress people. I definitely wasn't put on this earth to be in tour with folk and stressed out. I'm going to help somebody out tonight. I wasn't even put on this earth to play it safe. Play it safe if you're going to die anyway. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, you might as well live. First well Kings chapter 12. First Kings chapter 12 is going to get good. Look here in verse number four. <clears throat> and they were talking about Solomon. They said, your father has made our yoke heavy. Now, therefore, lighten the burdensome service of your father in his heavy yoke, which he has put on us, and we will serve you. So right here we see the reflection of the father saying, look here, you can't serve me properly as long as you have a heavy yoke on you. As long as life is heavy, you can't serve. Let me ask you again, do you really want to serve yes or no? Will somebody shout, I'm coming out of bondage. Tonight, Tonight. I will praise praise when I'm supposed to praise. I'm going to sow when I'm supposed to sow. I'm going to be where God calls me to be. And nothing will hold me back another day in my life. So you say, well, Pastor V, if, if, if it's that easy, I mean, if it's, if it's those, those kind of benefits, then why don't people yoke up with God? 
Turn over here to Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. I think I got some good timing. Genesis chapter 27. And this is the story of Esau. And y'all know Esau lost his birthright. Jacob came and stole it from him. And, you know, Esau began to cry out. And he said, look here, man, I can't believe this happened. And do you got anything for me? And Isaac began to prophesy over him. And Isaac said, well, from now on, your brother is going to be your Lord. He going to run you. That's what happened when sin came. God had no choice but to say the devil going to run you. The curse going to run you. Trial and tribulation going to run you. Yeah, yeah. The wages of sin is death. Amen. It is whether you say amen or no. And all of those urges that you have and insecurities that you have and lack that you have and not being able to 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 uh, be who God called you to be is anybody just consistently you don't got to say yes or no to this but you're consistently experiencing setbacks and rejection and and your mind is always cloudy and you just can't seem to be what God called you to be one day you're up then for the next two weeks you're down you got more down days than you got up days that's called life. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Yes, or at least that's called this world. Yes. Why would you want that kind of life? <laughs> Come on now, talk back to me. You like that life. Mm -hmm. You're comfortable with it. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. What if I showed you you might be? What if I showed you you might be? You were doing all that no just a minute ago. So he said, your brother's going to lord over you. Now look here in verse number 40. And he said, and by the sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you become restless that you should break his yoke off of your neck. Amen. So right here he's saying, you see the principle where Isaac is telling Esau that yoke is going to stay on there as long as you're comfortable with it. And he said, the day you become restless... The day you get tired of it is the day you will break it. So I think I'm proving my case that if it's still there, if you still have not found rest for your soul, it's because you're not tired of it yet. You're not tired of the depression yet. You may not want it, but you're still comfortable with it. Because the day that you become uncomfortable with this low-level life, you will change no matter what I declare. There's a godly restlessness coming over you. I can't sleep being this broke. I can't get comfortable being like this. Somebody's experiencing this restlessness as we speak. Your food don't even taste right. You can't party like you used to. You can't even eat. You can't enjoy life like you used to. God says that that's a divine restlessness. And if you're truly tired of it, you can't just sit back not being able to sow like God called you to sow. Not being able to praise like God, be, you know, call you to pray and be cool with it. I'm looking at you and I'm telling you, you ain't tired of it yet. Because the day you get tired of it, you'll take off running around the church just because God told you you'll do anything to get free. Somebody say, when I get tired of it, it's coming off. If it ain't came off, I ain't tired of it. Except the truth. Yeah. Ain't nothing 
Nothing like being in an outfit that's too small. Come on, ladies. I heard there are certain undergarments that you can't wait to get home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or maybe you've been in bondage so long you don't even know you're there. So I want to talk to you about five ways, not five, three ways or three aspects to decide what you'll be yoked up to. Got it. Number one is going to be your company. (laughs) Yes, when you get tired, you'll change company. Number two is your compliance. Yeah, when you finally get broken. You will comply. And then number three is your compass. So let me say this again. Number one, company. Number two, compliance. And number three, your compass. The Bible talks about we walk by faith and not by sight. So when you're walking, watch this, y'all, or when you're yoked with something, you're walking with it. I say you're walking with it. Turn over here to Psalm chapter number one. Psalm chapter number one. I'm ready to kick up dust now. I had to break some off. So, 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 folk. Yes, Lord. You know, sometimes people would break free if they knew they were bound. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter one. Let's see if you're really tired of it. Psalm chapter one. Psalm chapter 1. Let me get over here. Lord have mercy. Well, y'all done got me crunk already. I'm trying to be cool. I'm trying to be cool. Y'all say this with me one more time. Say, I'm free free to be be where God called me me to be. be. Y'all ready? Look at verse number 1. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So right here is letting me know that my blessing is dependent on what kind of counsel I'm walking in. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't listen to anybody. You can't listen to everybody. So what this is saying is as long as I'm hanging around Shaniqua and them, and Shaniqua and them are giving me advice on doing things that go against what God has called me to, then I'll be robbed of the blessing that God has called me to. Ah. Oh, y'all not tired of it yet, are you? You are walking by somebody's philosophy. Whether you want to admit it or not. It could be the cool girls. Y'all got cool girls? Come on now. The cool kids. And what they like to do. And we'll do what we want to do. And we ain't got to respect pastor. We praise when we want to praise. We come to church when we want to come to church. And God said, look here. That kind of counsel will bring you into a bondage by which the blessing cannot work. Where my amen's at? You know what the Bible says over in uh, 2 Corinthians, is it 1 Corinthians 15 and 53? It said bad company. It corrupts good character. So no matter how long I pray, no matter how much I worship, no matter how I fast and get in my word, if I get around the wrong people, then it can annul everything that I work for. And I'm here to call the devil a liar and Jesus the Messiah. I don't know about y'all, but the day you get tired of your marriage not working, your finances not working, and things not working in your life, you will tell Shaniqua, I love you, but I can't talk to you right now. I can't walk with anybody who has a philosophy that goes against the word of God. Am I talking good up in here tonight? 
Well, shout like I just gave you a blessing. Because I did give you a blessing. You've been asking God, why aren't things working for me? It's because you're walking in ungodly counsel. You might have to push ignore. You might have to push block. You might have to change your lunch schedule. Something got to change. Because I'm tired of this yoke being on my life. I'm tired of being stuck with folk that ain't going nowhere. I'm tired of being stuck with folk that's always complaining. It's time for me to be where God has called me to be. Can I take a side road? Notice he said, blessed are those who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor what? Standeth in the path of sinner. Guess what? While you're walking, when you take a break, you're going to find yourself standing somewhere. <laughs> I can't walk with ungodly people and not end up standing on the wrong path. There's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to destruction. <laughs> Y'all act like y'all the sinners that I'm talking about. I'm looking at your faith. <sighs> You're not in bondage anymore, or are you? Then he said, Blessed is the man who stands not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor what? In a, as sinners, nor what? Sit in the seat. Oh my God. I thought I was seated. In heavenly places. We found out I'm seated in heavenly places. So how can I expect to have blessings if I'm not sitting in the right seat? <laughs> Turn over here to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, because many times we look at that passage and say, I don't want to hear that right now. Well, you want to hear them bill collectors keep calling you? you come on now. You, you, you want to hear the bad doctor report? You want to keep hearing no? Come on, somebody. You are blessed. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 1. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Ask your neighbor who you've been hanging with. I rebuke the blessing blockers out of your life. Amen. Amen. Uh, ooh, I don't pour some peroxide on some stuff. I say I rebuke the blessing blockers out of your life. But you got to let them go. Can't cast a demon out of somebody that don't want to let it go. Them blessings been coming to you, but something has been blocking them. It's called walking with the wrong folk, standing with the wrong folk, and sitting with the wrong folk. So if I'm seated in heavenly places, there is something to that. Am I talking good or no? Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. It says, blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Where, y'all? In heavenly places. Where are you seated, y'all? In heavenly places. Where? In heavenly places. Well, that's where your blessings are. If I'm walking with ungodly people, that means I'm yoked with ungodly people, which means I'm on a path that does not have the blessings on it. So I can talk all day, Lord, where my blessing at? He said, look here in my word. Your blessings are where you're sitting. In the blessed don't beef with the miserable. I don't have time to sit with you and complain about what they did and what they did not do. I am blessed. And if 
I knew it instead of complaining I'll take my seat of authority and fix it myself where my blessed folk at in here I, oh no, no stop, stop, stop telling stories if you ain't walking in this thing where my blessed folk in here They say, look here, whatever I bind is bound. So now you're wondering why you're trying to bind stuff and it's not being bound. Because God said you're not in the right seat. You're sitting with scornful people. But God said today you're about to elevate. You're about to take your life to another level. And you're going to say, hey girl, I'll come back and get you. But if not, I'm going by myself. There's certain paths that you got to take alone. But you're never alone because you're yoked with him. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Somebody say, I'm seated in heavenly places. And I'm going to stay there. Because that's where my blessings are. When you get tired, like that boy sung that song, I ain't going to talk about him right now, his name, but he said, when a woman's fed up, there's nothing you can do about it. When you really get fed up, there's nothing that the devil can do about it. I don't care what you used to be tempted by in the past. He can't tempt it with you anymore. Ah, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Once you taste this, what, what, what used to look good don't even look good no more. What used to taste good don't even taste good anymore. Look at your name and say, I'm not going back. In Jesus' name. Now turn over here to Amos chapter 3. Because now once you get tired of that, there's a compliance that you have to have. Hallelujah. Everybody say Compliance. Amos chapter 3. Because once you yoke, you're walking. I'm walking with the Lord. I'm chilling with the Lord. I'm chilling with the Lord. He's my companion. He's my company. If you can't hang with him, you can't hang with me. So I can tell some of y'all some two-faced friends. Y'all know any two-faced friends? Your two favorite friends, they hang with your enemy, didn't want to come hang with you. Playing both sides. Yeah. See, y'all still think Jesus is some kind of little mystical figure. He's my real friend. And if you can't hang with him, you can't hang with me. That's some real life stuff, ain't it? Amos chapter 3, look at verse number 3. He says, how can two... Walk together, lest they agree. All right. Lest they are what? Agree. That has to do with compliance. Got it. In other words, he's saying, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. In other words, if you learn something, that means you have complied with what you've been taught. In other words, I can't say I learned from the math teacher if I still think one plus one is five. I may have thought it was five at one time, but if I have learned from her or him, I know the correct answer. So if he said, whom the son set free is free indeed, even when I feel like I'm in bondage, I have to agree with him by declaring what he has said. Everybody say, I'm rich. I'm rich. Okay, don't say it because you want to be. Say it because he said you are. See, he said, I was made poor. That through my poverty, you might be made rich. He ain't talking about spiritually rich. He talking about some money. Look at the context of the scripture. So the Lord say, I went through all this hell so you would not have to. 
So why still act like you're down and you're not? Somebody shout, I'm all the way up. If he says I'm all the way up, then that's what I agree with. I walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, I'm not going by what it looked like, what I feel like, what Shaniqua and them said. Remember, I got away from them a long time ago. I ain't worried about the naysayer. I'm not worried about who going through this and who going through that. All I can be concerned about right now is my walk with God. There's some power in that. Because that means that if I agree with him, then I'm walking with him. And wherever he go, that's where I'm going also. He never goes to defeat. Which means I'll never end up there. Come on now, throw me five more up there because I'm getting ready to preach these folk free up in here. I said, I'll never go there. If I walk with him into the wilderness and it's only two fish and five loaves, we still going to eat. If I walk with him into a graveyard, y'all not ready for that. Y'all not ready for that. Let me give you something you can handle. The scripture says he puts my feet on solid ground. Yes, sir. Well, his solid ground might not be mine. His definition of solid ground might not be mine. When Lazarus had died, he said he's not dead, he's asleep. When a little girl had died one time, he said, she's not dead, she's asleep. What happens when no ground is still solid ground? If that's where he is, and you promise to put my feet on solid ground, that's all I need to know. Can I help you? So one night, the disciples are in a storm, and they saw something walking on water. Again, your definition of solid ground might not be his definition of solid ground. So Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, and because he took his yoke upon him, he said, I want to walk on it with you. See, y'all not ready to go with the Lord. Y'all not ready. So Peter didn't say, Lord, I want to walk on water too. He said, no, if it be you, bid me to walk on the water. And Jesus said, come, oh my God. Because Peter agreed with him, Peter walked on water like it was solid ground. What if I'm broke and still live like a millionaire? What if I got genetic abnormal things in my body but I still outlive grandma and the healthiest man in the world? You're about to learn what Jesus meant when he said my grace is sufficient for you. You ain't got to have it all together. You're walking with the one who does have it all together. This is why I don't shout just because money come in. I shout because he is my money. I'm preaching up in here. I declare that God is about to pay some bills that you cannot afford. Because he don't live in poverty. He lives at the right hand of God. And if that's where he lives, that's where I also live. So 2 Peter 1 says, grace and peace can increase. I'm about to preach you free tonight. I say I'm about to preach you free tonight. Grace and peace can increase. It said grace and peace are multiplied through the knowledge of God and Jesus. 
Which means the more I learn about him, the more grace I'm going to have in my life. Let me roll over on this side. I say the more grace I'm going to have in my life. What's grace? It's God's sufficiency on your insufficiency. What that means is where I can't do it, he'll make it happen. If I go back over to Matthew chapter 11, he said, learn the unforth rhythm, rhythms of grace. In other words, there's a rhythm to this thing. There's a pattern to this thing. Y'all going to make me keep preaching, aren't you? Jesus said, for I'm meek and what? Lowly. Which means I got to get low too. I said, I got to get low too. In other words, in the kingdom, up is down. The way up is down. So if I'm walking with him, I'm going the way he goes, and he always goes down before he comes up. So whenever something is trying to bring me down, I shout about it. This is what Paul, when he learned of him, he said, I found out where I'm weak, that's where he's strong. So I learned the glory in reproaches. I learned to praise God in the good time and the bad time. Because God wants to do something in my life. Yes, the Bible talked about Abraham, how God waited till him and his wife couldn't have a child to let them have a child and to change the whole trajectory of their life. Could it be that everything that you've gone through in 2024 is putting you in position for God to bring you higher than what you would have gone? I'm talking about the power of a yoke. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you look at a tree, when a tree grows, it starts off going down. They put the seed in the ground. And when the seed grows, it don't grow up first. It goes deeper into the ground. It goes deeper into the darkness. And then when it finally reaches that place, then you'll start to see it go up. And if you can see the tree from the ground, under the ground, and the top, if you can see it at the same time, they look identical. She got it. I think she got it. I think he got it. (laughs) In other words, in the kingdom... Death means multiplication. To live is Christ and to die is gain. We're not talking about physical death. It's when I die to that company. It's when I die to my old ways of doing things. Yes, there was a time where I was nervous and the old man thinks I should still be nervous. But God told me to be of good cheer. I agree. I ain't got no choice. I can't walk with you unless I shout during trials and tribulation. When I'm yoked up with him, I can't help it. I have to do it. He didn't say it wouldn't be a burden, but it's light. These minor afflictions the light in comparison to the weight of glory is not worth me getting out of fellowship with God can I keep going turn over here to hallelujah (laughs) what I say the third one was y'all what? All right, let's look at this before we go into that so you can get this. Turn over here to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Look at verse number 1. It says, Therefore, now there is no what? 
condemnation for those who are what? In Christ Jesus, who do not, who do not, who do not, here's my walk again. He's not going in the direction of what some church folk go into. Who do not walk according to the what? Flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. So when I'm walking with God, when I'm walking with the Lord, he said it like this over in Luke 9 and 62. No one that takes the plow, we're talking about a yoke, no one who goes to work with me and looks back is fit for the kingdom. Where is the condemnation? It's based on something you did in the past. So now you don't have confidence based on how you cussed somebody out yesterday. God ain't in yesterday. He lives in a big old now. That's for a whole nother sermon right there. In other words, he's not concerned about yesterday as much as he's concerned about now. So when he tell you to confess your sin, he ain't telling you to beg him for forgiveness. He's just saying for you to check in. You all right? Yeah, Lord, I'm all right. He said, I'm going to clean you up. So when I'm walking with him, there's no guilt. If there's no guilt, then there's confidence. There's boldness. Because the righteous are as bold as a lion. I dare you to declare something right now like you've never sinned in your life. Go ahead, go ahead. <sighs> Y'all don't even hold. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm out of debt. My body's healed. My, my, my youth is renewed like the eagle. He said, let the weak say I am strong. Come on, somebody. I begin to declare things over my life like I'm sinless. nothing holding me back now why is this so important because it's going to affect your compass my compass the bible says for the sake of time that the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord i skip over to matthew 12 it says that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what y'all good things got it So, when I'm walking with him, I had to leave something behind. When I'm walking with him, are y'all with me tonight? I start agreeing with him. Once I agree with him, then that means I cannot say things he doesn't say. So Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. In other words, he's saying, I'm so in alignment with the word that you will see me speak the word that was written centuries before I was born like it was me. Oh, I done got into something now. I done got into something now. Jesus. My compass, turn over here to John, 1 John, no, no, James chapter 3, James chapter 3. Let's look what it says here in verse number 2. It says, for we stumble in many things, and if anyone does not stumble in word, he's a what? Perfect man, hallelujah, and able to bridle his whole body. In other words, that's going to affect your steps. Indeed, we put the bits in horses' mouths, and they what? Obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look at the ships, and although they're very large, they're driven by fierce winds and turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it boasts great things. So right here we're seeing that the tongue is what orders our steps. The tongue decides what I'm yoked up with. Blessed is he who stands not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, I'm not going by their word. Their words are not driving my life. Amen. 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 
When I agree with God, when I agree with the Lord, I'm speaking his words. And his words, Lord have mercy. Amen. Look at my sister. His words are directing like a compass where I end up. Everybody say words. words. Okay, for the sake of time, I can only go this far. I really want to go deeper, but I can only go this far. Isaiah 46 and 10 says that God declared the end from the beginning. Which means that it's already done. Got it? It's already what, y'all? The Bible says that Jesus, who I'm yoked to, was the word made flesh. Paul says in Galatians 20 uh, and 20, I was crucified with him. Now it's no longer I, but it's him. But before that, he says, I, I live, but the life I live is not him. I mean, not me, but it's what? Him. Him is the word. Him has been declared. (laughs) When I'm in him, I get him benefits. The problem is 2 Peter 2 and 12 said, if I want to reign with him, I got to suffer with him. Can I keep going, y'all? Let's get back over to Ephesians chapter 1. Everybody say the power of yokes. I'm out of time. Hallelujah. Am I preaching okay? He says in verse 4, y'all want me to keep going or stop? I can't hear you. Okay, all right, watch this. It says, just as he has chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be what? Holy and blameless before him in love. Having predestined us to adoptions of the son by Jesus Christ. Now, if I take the word, the prefix of a predestined, I see the word destined. This is where we get the word destination. Got it? He's already established a code. When he declared the end. Got it? That we should what? Walk. That we should what? This is where the rest come from. Because I don't have to figure it out. I just got to. I just got to stay yoked to the word. Speaking the word only. The word is like a GPS system. But in this case, it's like having a Tesla. That all you got to do is type in the destination. And relax. And you will wake up. It's already been preordained. But I got to rest. Final scripture. (laughs) Forgive. I don't know about that. Do you want to end up where you want to end up? Praise. I don't feel like it. Do you want to end up where you want to end up? You can't rest because you're fighting. Yeah, that's all you got to do is comply. Say it. All you got to do is comply. What's yanking you away from what you know you're supposed to be doing? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Man, I don't know what your problem is. Everybody know what her problem is. You know it too. 
You just yoked to some tradition. And you can't even experience heaven on earth. Give and it shall be given unto you. If I sow bountiful, I'll reap bountiful. You can't even sow. Because you're bound to something. You want to come in here and think you're tricking me. You can trick everybody else in this place. But you can't trick the person that's living it. Lord, I'm tired. Come to me. I came to you. Have you been patient? No, sir. Well, be quiet. You're not doing the map. There's no way you cannot do this map and not end up at the destination. That's the power of the yoke. It will pull you through everything. It will cause water to be solid ground. It will cause water to be wine. It will cause the dead to be living. It will cause the main to have body parts. It's a miracle worker. That path has miracles on it. Stop thinking that you can hear from a prophet and not be yoked. It didn't happen for me. But did you happen? What happened? Better yet, not did it not happen. It's already happened. It's already done. And he said, if you are yoked, you will find out. You will find what? Rest. You will find out it's already done. So instead of arguing with God, agree with him. You're right, Lord. I ain't been yoked to you. Still yoked to a preconceived idea. Last scripture. Yes or no? Everybody say, ain't nobody mad. mad. But the devil. devil. Say, so if you mad, mad. I ain't going to even finish it. Romans 8, verse 28. Everybody say, we're better together. together. And we know that all things work together. For those who love the Lord and are called according to his what? Purpose. From whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among the brethren. Moreover, who he has predestined, he is also called. And whom he has called, he is also justified. And whom he has justified, these he also what? Glorified. You are crooked. If I declared that this is the year of glory and you say I've lied and you refuse to be yoked with God. Because he said you were already predestined. He didn't say we'll glorify. He said glorify. Look at your name and say, tell the truth. The glory is waiting on you. Not you are waiting for the glory. You're not waiting on a move of God. You are the move of God. 
Because as he is, so are we. Not when we get to heaven, but in this world. As you move, he moves. Just like that. I walk with him. I talk with him. Seems like ain't nobody coming in. That's the direction you're going in. And that might be the last thing you see about full counsel. Because you know how it is. Once you start coming up with excuses why things are not working, then you leave out. Next thing you know, the rush comes in. Then you try to come back in, but you're too shame. Because you didn't do what God told you to do. Years ago, I was in sin, and I was in the bed with somebody. And I start talking like folk who don't want to live with God looking for an excuse. When you really want to do something, you do it. I ain't ever heard of sports hurt. Football hurt. As much as the Cowboys done hurt my feeling, I'm going to watch them again. Some of y'all have gotten over lottery hurt. They reject you every time you scratch that thing off. But then when it comes to church, we find out it's to be some kind of excuse for not coming. And the truth be told, your heart ain't really in it. Because if you really love him, can't nobody run you away. Stop lying when you get on the mic talking about it's all about him, but then you leave because of others. So I'm in the bed with somebody, and I'm talking like some of them, because I was backslidden. Backslidden people got a certain kind of conversation. Church folk ain't right. I just can't, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, you know, this person said, how you in here talking about folk ain't right? And you in the bed with me, and we ain't married. <laughs> I'm, you know, I've always considered myself a real dude. I just didn't shrug that off. I was like, whoa, you tell them the truth. God said, what if I use you to fix some of the problems? I said, well, that would be cool. It wasn't too much longer out of that than when he came into my room and got me. And he said, now get to know me for yourself. That way, folk can't pull me away from him. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of the problems that I saw in the church, God used me, not out of order, but he used me to fix it. So what are you going to do? Are you in the bed? Are you yoked up with the scornful? Complaining, running your mouth, while at the same time you got all this power and authority, but you ain't even using it? You're using your authority to make it worse? Hanging with scornful? That's the power of the yoke. Even God will back up from that. In Genesis, they were yoked up together, and he said, I got to confuse their language, because as young as they're yoked up together, nothing they imagine to do will be withheld from them. But there's another power being yoked, that when you're yoked up with him, nothing that me and him imagine. So it sounds arrogant, because again, you got to ask yourself, you got to be honest, you never live like that. Because if you have, you would never think I was arrogant. To call me arrogant is to say to doubt what God said. I can't be sure what he said and talk like he probably didn't mean it. Tonight, the shift happens. This is when you're going to decide who you love the most. The click or him. He said, unless you despise the folk that you like and love and respect over me, you can't walk with me. We make it hard 
and is not. Who are you going to let go of tonight? Search your heart. What are you going to let go of tonight? And if you can't be honest, that means more to you than God. See, real folk, it don't take them long. It didn't take me long. I didn't have to go in a sermon. I'm in the, you in the bed with me too? What you talking about, girl? She told the truth. Love rejoices in truth. And when I found out that I didn't love God and I had no business to be talking about anybody else who didn't love him right. He said, why get the speck out of your brother's eye and you got a big totem pole in your eye? And then he goes on to say, you can't even see the problem. You don't know what the real problem is. You can't see according to what my master said. It's time to get real in the battlefield. If this is you, lift your hands to the Father. You can't even keep real in the around this. You safe in here. Can't even keep it real. How about something you can't let go of that past? Well, I can't get right because of trauma. Because you, you, it means more to you. Having that fixed means more to you than the Lord. Be honest. Well, I'm, I'm going to get it together one day after he do. Nope, 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 nope. That means more to you than the Lord. It's somehow the fakest folk in the world think they real. I can admit mine. Oh, oh Lord, I put that before you. Yeah, I should have. No, I shouldn't have did that. And after I moved that thing out the way, and I can boldly come talk, and I'm not judging nobody. Say this with me. Say, Father, I repent of idolatry. I'm tired of these idols. That are not bringing me any peace, any rest, blocking my blessings. From this day forward, I want to walk with you. No matter what, I'm going to speak what you say. And I'll catch myself when I'm complaining. And I'll repent of that. I need you. I desire you. You deserve. My best. my best. I want, I want your, best. your best. I'm going to walk with you walk. from this day forward. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Give God some praise in the house. And I learned this from one of my mentors. He said, if you're quick to repent, you'll never be far from God. You should see how many times a day I repent. Sometimes I take it all the way down the line. I say, Lord, cleanse me no matter the cause, that I'll manifest you in a perfect spirit, a holy mind, and a sickless body. Amen. So then when the devil tried to put sickness on me, he said, oh, no, he ain't alive. It ain't no sickness on that path. Then when he attacked me again, I just go on back to it. Amen. Yeah, it's on me. He already did his part. Why would you complain other than not being straight? And until you can be honest with yourself, you cannot be honest with us. And the Bible says you'll be ever learning, never coming into the truth. You're wearing yourself out. I'm talking prophetically. You listen to the word all day, all your fast. I mean, you're fasting so long, you can't even breathe. I'm serious. And you still ain't came to the truth because you're not honest. Under grace, it's not the food as much as it is the distraction. Fast your trauma. Fast your trauma. Like when they say, starve your doubt. Fast it. 
push it back. When it comes back to you, yeah, all well, my life I've been tri- uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> no, uh uh-uh. uh. You'll starve it to death. You can't go with him. He's not doing that. Find me the scripture. And if you can't, who would you get that from? That's ungodly kind. And I bet you tell another folk that. And you're blocking their blessings. Once I'm honest with myself, say, Lord, you know what? I love this trauma more than I love you. I love this drama more than I love you. You know, Lord, you know, I want to walk with you, but until they do this, that's what Jesus told them when he took the plow. He said, let me go bury my father. He said, oh, let the dead bury the dead. What he meant by that, that's the past. The trauma is dead. You have control over your mind, not your, that's all in your head. We can't see it. Where it says, show us the trauma. The only one that can see that is the one who experienced it. Done it plenty of times at funerals. Folk act like they couldn't stop crying. Then I said something funny, everybody laughed. I said, oh, you could stop. You can. I know how this mind works. God would never put nothing on you that's that's hard to do. You just like it, and you got to be honest with it. I love church fights. I love gossiping about the pastor. I love disrespecting first lady. I like it. It feels good when I do it. All bitterness is is unfulfilled revenge. And vengeance ain't yours, baby. Get your offerings together. Yes, I got an assignment. That's what an apostle does. He sets that thing in order. I finna take keep lying to you. This your year breaking. How many times y'all heard that? You went to another church and they heard it, or you heard it over there too. <laughs> Why don't you break out of that bondage first? That might have been what the Lord was telling you. Hallelujah. Come on, chief. Amen. Yeah, as soon as you let that, that affair go, it's getting quieter and quieter. Yeah, why you get quiet for? Y'all, y'all want me to shut up now? You want me to, oh, you only want me to prophesy the other stuff. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't work, because you're cheating on your wife. <laughs> he who covers his sin, his sin will not prosper. You got the answer. Stop acting like you don't know what's going on. Don't you turn me off. Look at that. He was good till he got to that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Lift your offerings before the Lord. Father, I thank you that these offerings are blessed. Jesus, a high priest, I ask you to worship the Father in heaven with these tithes and offerings that he may pour out a blessing that we have not room enough to receive. I thank you for instantaneous returns on the giving. I say these offerings are blessed. In the name of Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to be saved tonight? Anybody thought you were saved until tonight? <laughs> Somebody say he having fun. I am. I'm really having fun. You righteous. All you got to do is forget about it. The problems you did, that way you don't feel so bad. Oh, he told my toes up tonight. Then when your toe, your spiritual toe, love that. They were tapping. The real you don't want to hang on to an affair. You're sinless. That's that flesh want that affair. Why y'all get quiet when I talked about affairs? (laughs) Oh, Lord, we we got that much work to do. Amen, amen. Everybody say, "Let let her go. But she feel me, man, she feel me. Listen, man. Never date a woman who disrespects your wife. That's a joke. Oh, my God. Somebody said amen. The side chick said amen. I respect her. I'll make sure he at home on time.
if you're messing with them, you're already disrespecting her. Oh, my God. Yeah, that only comes from worldliness. We all have those different urges, but man, you start living with, for the Lord. I'm talking. Can I, can I, I'm helping somebody. We almost got this offering together. I mean, you think about when I was single, boy, you know what kind of women I passed up? And I ain't really had no obligation. You know, we were talking about, oh, he, watch, watch her. She's trying to get the past. I'm like, yeah, I ain't seen what I really need. Y'all need to be over here trying. <laughs> yeah, boy. Ooh, Jesus. So how much more if you're married can you say, hey, you know what? I, I done, especially if you get to a certain age. He don't even function like he used to. That's what the Bible said. Flee youthful lust. Now I'm talking to a man because this is directly what God told me to say. But there's some women too. The fruit of the Spirit is not in singing and prophesying. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control, patience, goodness. Do we need to go down the whole list? So I don't know if you're in the Spirit based on how you can prophesy and how you can preach and how you can sing. I know it based on how you can control this flesh. She make me feel. That fire going to make you feel some way, way too. Lady J coming out of me. Let me say Lady J coming out of me. Yeah, man. It ain't all that cracked up to be. So we had some people get baptized tonight. Harper Wooten. Here comes Harper. High five, Harper. Boom. Here you go, baby. Can you stand up here beside Pastor? Amen. It's 830 on the dot. Binley Earls. Binley. Oh, she said, look at her. She coming up here with her. Y'all got y'all hair like. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at her. Oh, yeah, I got y'all here. Like, I rock rough and tough with my Afro puff. Hey, rock on with your glad self. Look at her. Hey, man, I'm, I'm just going to start preaching to the babies. They love me. Because they innocent. They ain't got all them affairs. And st- okay, let me go on. And Elia Heisler. They're right here. Jesus says, suffer the little children. And so if y'all got time, I want you to come around here and shake these babies' hands. That's what they did me when I, when I got baptized in the, in the uh, Assemblies of God church. Well, I remember it was a number of Caucasian folk in there. And uh, I was only six years old, and this in the 80s. Oh, you, you feel something? You, you feel your pastor? You, you feel your pastor? Yeah. Yeah, no, it comes back around. And this is during, you know, right around the time of affirmative action. And the folk love me so much. Can y'all show, can y'all return the favor? Yeah. Amen. This is part of my healing. Everybody say, let go of the trauma, Pastor. <laughs> so let me bless these babies. Hallelujah. Amen. Since I, amen. Uh-oh. What is that? If that's 100, I, I need that back. But you can keep that. Uh-oh, there's another one. You get that too. What is that? That's 100? Oh, y'all. Yeah, oh. Here you go, baby. Uh-oh. All right, here go, here go five. I got to get the grown folk out of here. They, they, the, the side chick out. Okay, no, let me, let me stop. I'm playing. Well, I almost dropped a 20. I, 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 I clinched up. I said, oh, Lord. See how you can have fun and still be yoked up? Ma'am, she got one, too. Oh, she need a, oh, you need to. Here you go, baby. Go one. Look how she looking out for us. She my sister keeper. I think we need to go a whole nother service. 
and just listen to these babies. I got you another dollar here in a second. I'm going to get them out of here, okay? Can y'all stand? <laughs> y'all can have fun and live for the Lord, too. Oh, there go your other dollar baby right there. Amen. There you go. Look how she's sharing. Them kids ain't got in my pocket. <laughs> you should, boy, you should see my kids at home. They call it moolah. <laughs> CJ be like, Sadie, get the moolah. I can't drop no money on the floor. Them babies got over a thousand dollars in their bank account. <laughs> Last time I talked to you it was seven hundred, wasn't it? Let me go. Father, I thank you for every soul in this place. I plead the blood of Jesus over them now. Father, I ask you to cause your face shine upon them, be gracious unto them, and give them your peace. Father, when they say that they are free, let this be from the honesty of the heart. May they walk in your freedom and in your liberty. In Jesus' name, amen. Love y'all.